This podcast is sponsored by Release Winery. Every wine tells a story. Each growing season, it's our goal to create an artisan Napa Valley wine of exceptional quality. Join us as the story of this ultra-limited wine continues. Learn more at releasewinery.com. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, you have to be part mountain goat to live up here. <laughs> 1,600 feet at the very top and goes all the way down to 900 feet. So it's a very steep property. 2004, I bought the property. Uh, founded in 2003, and it's kind of an interesting story. At the time, I was making some wine uh, from a vineyard that was uh, about a quarter mile away from here that was owned by Betty O'Shaughnessy of O'Shaughnessy Wines. And it was her progeny, what she called her progeny vineyard, um, which of her two vineyards, uh, Mount Veter and Howell Mountain, I loved this Mount Veter vineyard of hers. And we made Syrah and Cabernet off of that property, and the wines were fabulous. And just at the time that I was thinking, I love these wines, I'd been making them for three years, I would love to find a property up here. I was driving down from the vineyard, and I saw a guy put out a for sale sign on the road. You seriously saw him as it was happening? As it was happening. Wow. And so I uh, stopped him and asked him what the story was, and he said it was a property with some developable land, and uh, it was for sale. And it turned out to be kind of a distress sale. So uh, we got it for a very reasonable price, which is the only way that normal people like me can grow grapes in the Napa Valley. Well, it's good that you admit to being normal. <laughs> <laughs> only issues uh, that I had were getting into the winery. Uh, we had uh, roads that were closed off and yeah, getting into the winery was very difficult. So I had to put a bicycle in the back of my car, park my car at a friend's winery and ride through back roads and vineyards in order to, to get there to work every day. And uh, eventually I just had to stay in the, in the winery proper uh, and spent three days there eating nothing but top ramen. <laughs> oh, man. we're growing four different uh varietals here we grow viognier and we make a wine called uh, 20 cubic meters that's uh, a viognier aged and fermented in terracotta amphora we grow uh cabernet sauvignon we grow Cabernet Franc and Merlot, and those three, three varietals go into a wine that we call Space and Time that's uh, Cabernet Franc dominant, has a little bit of Merlot in it, and, uh, and then uh, quite a bit of Cabernet Sauvignon as well. And then we make a wine called the Incubo that we've been making since we, uh, almost since we first bought the property, that's 100% uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. We're pretty close to 100%. Some years we'll put in a little bit of Cabernet Franc, but pretty close to 100%. We do do some single vineyard wines from properties that we don't own, where we have uh, agreements either to buy or trade for the fruit uh, from the owners. And we have a few properties like that. Uh, we make a wine called Turf War that's from a vineyard north of St. Helena. We make a wine called Calihol Manuk. Uh, that's from the very top of Spring Mountain, from friends uh, that have a vineyard up there. And we make a wine called Her Majesty's Secret Service <laughs> that's uh, from Stagecoach Vineyard on the eastern side of the valley. Well, uh, funnily enough, it was uh, the blocks that we uh, took the wine from were originally M5 and M6. And so we uh, extrapolated that to MI5 and MI6. And uh, MI6 is, of course, Her Majesty's Secret Service. But uh, it also has another story. My wife's father was a spy for the, uh, for the British government, and he worked at a place called GCHQ, the Government Communication Headquarters, which is kind of the NSA of, uh, of Great Britain. But uh, 
we didn't really know what he did until his death. And it turned out that uh, he had been uh, one of the guys that would go into hotels and embassies and bug the bug the rooms and then break out. And he had a little group of four guys that he worked with that were um, that would disguise themselves as a fishing group and go in and plant these bugs in, in hotels and embassies. And uh, he was uh, a bit of a pilferer and would steal the uh, pens and pencils and pads of paper from work. And I was always surprised that you'd go over to his house and there'd be a pen there that said, uh, Her Majesty's Secret Service. <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to hide the fact that you're a spy, but yeah, yeah it says, says it on all of your pens and papers. <laughs>